Welcome everybody Hello. to the PIVX live round table number four. Four, yes. That's it. I am your host, Angelo Dodero, and this is my other host, Kelsey Cole. Hello. Uh, and we are very excited to have you. We've got a pretty good show lined up for you today, all about PIVX adoption. Uh, who's using it? Where are they using it? What are they using it for? Shared. Let's get it shared. So we're going to wait for some people to jump on here and uh, give it until about five minutes after the hour. Please leave some comments in the chat for a chance to win some PIV. Uh, we will choose the winner. We'll say maybe six or six? seven minutes. Yeah, Video six or six? seven minutes after the hour, wherever you are. We know we got a little international audience going, a little, a little big international audience. So let us know where you're from. You know, just say hi in the chat. Uh, maybe even let us know if you so dare. What is your screen name on Discord if you're a regular, uh, so that we can give you a little shout out. So I'm going to jump over to the chat, see what's going on, who we got here, who we got who we got, Crypto Geek, fellow Pivians, aka. Pivmapolitan on Discord. That is an amazing username. From Stuttgart, Germany, tuning in here. How's everybody doing? Thank you, Crypto Geek. First gen, waiting for Jeffy, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got Jeff coming on the show today. Oh, cool. JDS. Jeffy is nutty like that. Actually, I said Jeffy. I don't know. I said Jeffy from the last one. It just it's sticking. Um, Medu, hi guys, hello, hello, Papos3, go Pivx. We got Jakas, Jaka Splinter from Netherlands, Papos3 in California, Woo. Missouri. Got some lo more love for Jeff coming in. RC yeah. Tech, Germany, Singapore. Earth. Yeah. Not me, oh, Dennis. man. Not me. Is that Den Dennis? Dennis. We got Dennis on the show today That's from Dennis. Singapore. He'll be coming on a little bit here. Crypto Master, Anamika, Crypto Master, Crypto Geek. Crypto oh, Greek. Crypto Greek. Like the yogurt. Oh. And the yeah. souvlaki. Well, maybe both are true. Opa. Maybe he's Greek and a geek. Let's hope so. Latvia. Love it. Jeff, lift your shirt. Woo. So have you guys seen Jeff's crazy moves? Have you seen on Instagram? No. Oh my! I showed you his body slamming someone. No, not Jeff. No, no, Dennis. Dennis. Yeah. Dennis. No, I Dennis, saw that. That was crazy. Dennis, lady killer on Instagram. Killing it. Our Singapore ambassador was body slamming people the other day, and he had multiple angles because everyone was filming it. It was epic. Yeah, so was, shout out to you. Insane. Where where Dennis, can people go the see that? Body slammer on Instagram. Insta. Get on Insta. Where are we at? Three hundred three www it right, is we'll jump back over to the chat let us know where you guys are from what time zone you in what does it look like outside yeah it's a Anything, winter right. there it's a winter we're going to choose one one person that is commenting in the youtube chat is going to win some piv in three minutes three minutes three minutes well, guys do us a favor hit like on this video give it a share go on discord build some hype get some people in here if you're on telegram Jump in there and get the Yahoo's on Telegram uh, into live here and make sure that they know that the, the real action is on Discord. That's what all the cool kids know. Well, Telegram's got 200 people online at any given time. On 200? Average, online. I just looked and it had five. I don't know. When I looked, I had 200. That sounds like a big fat lie to Whatever. Me. So what is the agenda for this? Why don't you give us a little glimpse on what's the agenda? A little overview today. We're going to yeah. be talking about. Oh, we're waiting here so, for the winner. Um, we're going to chat a little bit about last week's episode and uh, an amazing call that Hannah and I have a crypto seat on Friday, which is debuting this week. Uh, State of the project. So make sure you catch that episode. Mm -hmm. I think it was the longest episode ever. We talked for about an hour and eight minutes or so. Um, but it was cool to have the ladies of PEVX on there and chatting a little bit about what we do. Um, it was super cool to hear about Hannah's translation stuff. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, then we're going to go through, um, well, the winner of the PIV, obviously, or PIV, the PIVX. Um, 
And then we've got Pivx Press, so just community Pivx. news updates, obviously 3.2, big buzz, big buzz. We've got some news around that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about what's happening in the broader crypto community, so the blockchain world, crypto in general. Some cool news coming out these days. Yeah, it's kind of heating up a little bit, heating yeah, up. We'll touch on a little bit of that. And then we've got Pivx Places is our big focus there, big segment. And big focus. Chad, who has really led that initiative, is going to spend some time with us. We're super excited to have him uh, from Rhubarb Media. Rhubarbarian. Um, and then we're going to have Dennis going to chat with us about being an ambassador. We got our friends from Rang Ranger. We got jo uh, Ranger. Jeff, Satoshi Naka Jeff, right? Perfect. It is Satoshi Naka Jeff, right? From South Africa. One and the same, South Africa. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we also have Ranger. Yes. So folks from Renger in Sweden, from Sweden, they accept PIVX for their delicious dried meats. So that's pretty cool. We'll get a, a, a little bit more of the scoop on that. And then we're going to talk about specifically how we can all help to grow PIVX places and the community. Um, because as you guys know, we're only as strong as our as our community. Yeah, what can we do? What can we what do? Can we so to help grow PIVX adoption? I would say that's a great theme for this episode uh if you have ideas drop them in the chat you know people are listening we're watching this um you know we we love to hear what is important to you guys because ultimately the people who know and love piv are the best source of information on how to take it to the next level and the best uh resource to help propel it forward so um i think that kind of sums up what's happening for this episode yes. and we are ready to announce a winner all right. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, our winner. Do I do a drum roll? A little sure. Drum roll? Okay. Anamika. 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 Uh, just do us a favor. Drop your username in the chat for Discord and uh, PM me on there. Angela, you'll see me in the lounge I just posted. Uh, just send me a DM and we will get you hooked up with your free PIV. 20 of them. 20. Was it 20? Yeah. 20 which are worth more this time than they were last 20 time. 20 piv, baby. Ooh, 20 uh... piv. And make sure you stay on until the very end for another chance to win some more piv. So with that, I think it is time to start our show. Let's do it. All right. So. Um, last week. Last time. Last happens. episode. So the episode that we did last week, we actually had uh, Mr. Crypto C on. And two we weeks ago. we digged into yeah this is two weeks ago we digged into a little bit about um, you know with him particularly how a DAO works what it means um, you know how it operates all that stuff but the overarching theme was more about privacy coins and you know can they really be stopped because there was a uh, media story that was pretty big um, where France made a statement uh, coming out against privacy coins. And PIVX was one of the coins that was actually named in the report, which was pretty interesting. And, you know, it begged the question, what can actually be done to stop a privacy coin or even a blockchain in general that once it becomes decentralized at a certain point? So we had some pretty fascinating guests on, including um, uh, Tina. Tina, uh, she was a guest and she actually works directly with regulators out in Europe and had some pretty amazing insights. Um, I would say overall, biggest takeaway, crypto is not a baby anymore. Crypto is not a baby anymore. That was definitely a big it's takeaway. A toddler. But I feel like it It was, the tone uh, was pretty optimistic and, yeah. and she, she felt pretty optimistic to me. Actually, she even called herself an optimist. So I, sure. I think, you know, people in uh, the crypto world sometimes become af afraid to have these discussions. And, and I think it's becoming clear the need to have certain discussions to just simply get it to the next stage. And uh, uh, I think that the last episode of the PIVX Roundtable uh, had a lot of fascinating points that would be great. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about, check it out. Um, we also had another video that came out this week, rather than this week, time's flying so fast, featuring none other than the PIVX Pixie herself. So if you guys didn't see it, make sure you head over to the video section of the PIVX crypto, uh, um, excuse me, the PIVX YouTube channel. And it's also on Facebook. I think it was even on Instagram. And, and LinkedIn. it was on LinkedIn. That was my best performer. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. <clears throat> you know, if you didn't think that LinkedIn 
was a great place to share crypto content. Apparently you're wrong because uh, actually sharing it on LinkedIn, on your personal profile, actually was the most popular place for this video. And the video, uh, sorry, we haven't actually mentioned what the video is. It's a video called Why Privacy Matters, and it touches on some uh, key facts that a lot of people may not be aware of about privacy and kind of what's happening with people's private data these days and you know what can be done about it and how PIVX fits in the picture. It's a very short video. It's only uh, four, four and, and a half minutes. And it was inspired by a PIVX blog that was reshared during the time of the whole privacy coin sort of, I won't call it scandal, but when France uh, mentioned us and several other privacy coins. That's yeah, not a scandal. Our team recirculated this awesome blog that someone did last year, two years ago on privacy, and that was sort of the bedrock for, for this video. Mm-hmm. So. The purpose of this series is to try to get more people into crypto who don't know about crypto and more people from the rest of crypto to get into PIVX because as we know, if they see that there's action going on and there's a lot of content being produced, people sort of, you know, kind of come flocking. So two two aspects of that and definitely having some female presence in videos is always good for this community because we don't see much of that. Um, but but the real goal of it was to help educate people who aren't in um, crypto, may understand blockchain or may not at all, and try to get them to understand and use PEVX to really be onboarding ramp. So we had about 1,800 views already on LinkedIn, which is huge, I think, for, for that video. Yep. Um, it's been translated now into days. several languages, thanks to Hannah and her team. So I think it's in four or five languages now. Which is great. Thank so, you very yeah. much, Hannah. Very cool. Big shout out for that. So we've got more coming in that series. There's going to yep. be six all together. And you can follow Pivx Pixie, my alter ego, on Instagram. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, to it's a great series. I really like the the video, the what's uh, Why Privacy Matters. And You shot it. Well, you know, you you were the one who spearheaded <laughs> it, so kudos to you. It's uh, I was just more of a, a, a pawn that was used in the process. Um, yeah, and I think... It's important to have different styles of content um, that reach and speak to different people. And, and what I like about the What's Poppin' with Pivx uh, series that, you know, obviously one video out now, more to come, uh, is that it's short form and geared at people that may stumble upon it that aren't necessarily looking for Pivx, which yeah. is cool, versus, you know, the round table and obviously the podcast that happen. That's for people who know about Pivx, who already love Pivx, who are already in the community, but it's it's great to have these other complimentary efforts that are Seven bringing languages new people in. so far. Wow, Chad's LinkedIn blew up, and Chad's team did the amazing uh, graphic, the the logo for what's popping with Pivx, so thank you, shout out to Shout Rebar. out to Chad's team, um, and yep. yeah. The Rude Barbarians. It's so fun, it's fun. It is fun, and yeah, how things hair, come together. The purple hair was um, a shout out and a thank you to uh, Eric and to Chad and to Seven and to all the people who came in early from the PIVX community and supported the project that we helped to launch, which is called AdBank. Um, and there was a story around purple hair there. So yep. that's why the wig the wig had to get in there. That's right. Maybe the real purple hair will make a comeback. We'll see. Well, you never know. Never know. You never, never know. know. That's, that story is for another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Next, I guess we'll move on to yeah. the news. Let's move and groove. Well, 3.2 wallet coming out. So this is a this is a pretty big update. Massive. Uh, yeah. So I'll I'll just read a little, uh, maybe a little excerpt here. Where do you think is, is this? The- is a fun quote from a community leader, Jackman, um, that that gave an awesome quote for this Jackie major Mom. milestone release. Mm. It is a whopper of a release, as the communications team has said behind the scenes. Yeah, that's a whopper. So <laughs> uh, let, let's just go on the high-level points. Zero coin auto mint addresses. Uh, so here's how it works. Normally, when you receive PIV, you need to either manually mint them into ZPIV or set an auto mint threshold, such as 15%. So while these two scenarios will work for most people wanting privacy, we wanted to give another way for individuals to get total control. With auto mint addresses, you can set up a receive address where all PIV received there automatically is minted into ZPIV. Pretty, pretty big, pretty uh, nice convenience feature that I know that has been requested a bit. Uh, pre-computed uh, zero coin proofs, got zero coin light node protocol, uh, ZLMP. Um, and also now this is, this is the big one too. Um, where you can do some of the 
voting directly in, in the wallet. wallet which is huge remember this is a democracy we are a decentralized autonomous organization which means we do not have a head office or a leader uh we we run it ourselves and each uh, we run each other and so yeah. what we need to do is vote and, and each make other sure, are run by one <laughs> make sure that your voices are heard so if you have a master node Make sure that you're using that vote uh, and you're giving your feedback and you're sharing it and you're yep. voting. And if you love the work of Hannah and Chad and some of the amazing people that contribute to this community, make sure that you're voting and you're sharing and you're supporting because their proposals will not get passed without your help. That's right. Yeah, it's very important. Okay. Atomic so, swaps. Oh, atomic swaps. Mm -hmm. So another big feature for this release is the inclusion of BIP65. So this is a consensus standard that's been implemented for atomic swaps. Atomic swaps are a feature that enables trustless cross-chain exchanges with other cryptocurrencies. So it's uh, potentially a very fast and easy way to trade cryptocurrencies with other users without the need for a centralized exchange. So um, atomic swaps are, are kind of a, uh, probably something that's going to become a bigger and bigger thing. And uh, very, very cool. You're going to have full release notes available. Uh, there will be a press release that's going to be going out onto the wire as well as within the crypto community because we do have some pretty big news here. Um, so please help share it out. Uh, anything and everything that you see, share it, share it, share it. Uh, it really helps us get you know more um, notoriety within the crypto community. So a couple other quick updates on the PIVX press side. Magnum Wallet has now added PIVX. Um, this wallet is airdrop friendly. It's multi-currency, instant exchange, decentralized, and truly light, which means none of your personal information will be stored in the wallet. So check that out, but, but we do love the PIVX wallet. So check out our update <laughs> first and foremost, but thank you Magnum for including us. Uh, we do have a new exchange listing on Reflex Trader. It's run by Coinopay out of the Netherlands. Um, so danke to that team for including us. We always love new exchange listings. Um, and then just on the community side, uh, PIVX Press Espanol, new edition, one Zeddy shirt oh. that I found. Yes, so uh, my Espanol Shout is not so great. I could say some things, but... Um, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to because we have a no. lot of Latin American PIVX people. No, and we don't. Just, we want to do it justice. They would, if we yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is how oh, they write. Oh, no. Ha, ha, ha. Let's. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's not even go down there. So that was the last one on on that. Oh, on the wallet. PIVX John. PIVX John uh, just did a talk to a data class um, on privacy and why that matters. So always cool, guys. If you want to engage with the community, there's always local colleges and universities. Um, even around the world that are very interested in this stuff and anybody can, uh, you know, connect with those profs and, and share their knowledge. So thank you, Penix John, yeah. for spreading the word. And make sure that you check out the blog for the full release notes on 3.2 mm -hmm. um, just to get the full download there. We only covered a few of the points, but let us know in the comments here what you are most excited about in this new wallet release. Um, Let's go to what's crypto going news on. Update. Yeah, let's do the crypto news update. So, guys, what do you think? Is crypto winter over? There is, I think, a bit of a turn of the tides in some people's opinion uh, in, in regards to sentiment. Are you yeah. feeling? What are you feeling? Well, crypto Twitter is like super buzzy with positivity and optimism. People are getting really excited, especially for altcoins. A lot of positivity around altcoins, which weren't getting a lot of positivity last mm -hmm. year. Um, so All people love, looking baby. a lot at, at projects with, you know, low caps that have really great teams and excellent potential. And, and so I think we're seeing, you know, people starting to understand fundamentals uh, mm. and, and actually looking at the market the way, you know, a classic stockbroker like my dad would, who mm. really trades based on fundamentals and company strength, et cetera. So, yeah, it's exciting. We, we hit spring last week on the calendar, so it only makes sense that crypto spring would follow. So we got a question mark, crypto winter. Crypto winter is a term that people are using to just describe the, the bear market in general. Um, and so what do you guys think? Is crypto winter over? Uh, what are your thoughts? Pretty interesting. You know, I think it's, I think a lot of people are really excited at uh, an opportunity to see things going back to the glory days. Yep. I think it's a little too early to say, but you know, good news is good news, baby. I'll take it. Uh, I know you're very excited about the next story, so I'll I let you show that one. Blockchain is in the latest Louis Vuitton collection. 
which probably doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, but when you look at the luxury market and how much it's worth, Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy, LVMH Group, which is the largest privately held luxury company in the world, and they're responsible for a hell of a lot of brands, including the Clicquot, Moet, obviously Louis Vuitton, Dior, et cetera, et cetera. Um, have been working on an official blockchain project completely under wraps for the last year based on Ethereum. And they chose Ethereum because they wanted something they felt could scale from a real world capability. Hmm. So very cool. I was very excited to see that um, in the fashion news. That's the the industry that I came from before uh, being in the tech space. So it's cool to see them collide. Uh, lots of money to be made by tracking luxury goods on the blockchain. And they're using the... Um, the uh blah, 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 the crypto kitties model non-fungible tokens oh yes. non-fungies that's it yeah that's it that's what they're using i think we should be calling them non-fungies yes that's honestly a lot more fun okay well you know i i'm definitely more inclined to buy a louis vuitton than i was yesterday but i'm not going to say right, that you track it on the chain i'm not going to say that i'm uh that i'm that close though to a purchase, Whatever. not officially. Uh, Peter Thiel backed crypto brokerage Tagomi, just bought its bit license. Tagomi, an institutional investor focused crypto brokerage backed by Peter Thiel. For those of you who don't know, he's one of the founders of PayPal um, and obviously a ton of other stuff. Uh, they just got approval to do business in New York on Wednesday with a bit license <clears throat> from the Department of mm. Financial Services. Rah. Mm, you know, it seems like there's a lot of big players that are taking crypto super seriously and they're uh, surprisingly quiet during these times. They are about it. because they're sweeping up all of the remnants. Well, why dri remnants. drive up all the buzz and just, you know, make it uh, more of a, a difficult playing field for themselves while they're building? It's only heating up. Let me tell you. Kelsey's, tell you. Kelsey's I, I can see the, the holes on this or the horns on this bull. So uh, following a roughly seven months long application process, the New Jersey based firm owned by Teal will now be able to work with institutional clients based in the world's financial sector, uh, making it the 18th company to receive a bit license, a permit, which allows companies to buy and sell virtual currency for customers in New York. I'm actually surprised it's that many. Yeah. 18th seem, seems like a lot. Well, do we have somebody joining us here? Yeah. Chad, Chad. Hello. So he's already at that time. We'll it just is. just finish these last two yeah. pieces from TechCrunch and Pantera. Yeah, let's do that. You want to take TechCrunch? Yeah, so the tech, uh, TechCrunch founders crypto fund tops 100 million. So that's, of course, the one and only Michael Herring, Arring, Arrington. 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 I always want to say Arrington. Arrington. Um, we had some fun watching him, Ripple Guy, and that awesome Mike Butcher yep. piece. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, that that was a good one. Lives. If you guys didn't see that, there was a, a tech crunch. It wasn't a debate. It was like a sit-down live interview. Yeah. yeah, yes, live interview. That's the right. It was supposed to be really fluffy. For With everybody. Brad Garlinghouse from, from Ripple and uh, the founder of TechCrunch, who is extremely bullish on Ripple. Like, very, very like, bullish. Like, like, like to the nines bullish. He focuses on Ripple and now is Yeah, it's literally got XRP in the title. That's how extreme. Like the founder of TechCrunch, which I, I was kind of shocked XRP by. XRP Capital. But the editor-at-large for... Uh, TechCrunch doesn't seem as bullish to me about XRP, which he was ripping on them. He was ripping on them a little bit. You guys, you guys, check it's that entertaining. out. Entertaining. It is entertaining. Go check yeah. out, uh, check out TechCrunch, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, something or other. Put that in there. So now they it. have a hundred, hundred million bucks. Uh, they just completed their first acquisition, so that's huge, 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 huge with a uh, fresh thirty mil. And Pantera, last last little uh, I'll keep the lights on piece of action. They've now hit their 175 million dollar target. So again, um, and someone pointed out, you know, crypto winter has not been going on for devs who've been working even harder. Um, that's why, guys, there's all this the bucks are still flowing. In. Look yeah, at these the bucks. bucks are flowing. If the code is flowing, the bucks are flowing. So is that, it doesn't matter what the rest of the world says. We'll we'll roll with that one. Sweet. We'll just say it's true. Okay, we are late for chat. Uh, we are. So you know what? We're gonna skip our last story and welcome <laughs> Mr. Chad Valentine, yeah. Rubarbarian himself, uh, Rubar Media. Hey guys, Thanks can you hear me? Okay. Chad. Excellent. Are you on video today I'm too? Here. Yay! I'm, I'm trying. It looks like there's an error with my 
camera. Sorry. Oh. Oh yeah. Usually, if it's if the video is not on, there will be like a little thing in the middle, but it's not there. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's all good. We'll just roll with it, and and if it turns on, then it turns on. Um, but Chad is uh, the head of the. Chad's the officially the creative director. Well, let's preface it with that. But which then, which is very important because he created uh, the Pivot brand as we know it today. Um, but also is in charge of a ton of other initiatives. And today we mm -hmm. want to spotlight the work that he's done on Pivot's Places with Pivot's ambassadors, um, because you guys might not even realize there's www.pivotsplaces.com, which is a microsite, an awesome map um, that you can go and see yeah. everyone that's accepting crypto or Pivot's, and then also where the ambassadors are located. And that's something that Chad not only started, but also continues to manage and run and train these people and be a resource for them. So. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So right off the bat, when we started with Pivx, um, I was really excited about some of the international, um, the regional kind of pivions that were popping up all over the world and knew that if we wanted to really be a truly grassroots, common currency, uh, real world use, we're going to have to be touching base at a grassroots level. So it was really exciting to First of all, I think Jeffrey might have been one of the first that I ran into from South Africa, and then one Zeddy. So it, it started to really kind of propel itself, and then we just said, let's just wrap this into a program, call it Pivx Ambassadors, put a little criteria around it, and let's let us um, on the marketing team start to support the ambassadors with marketing materials, uh, slideshow presentations, slide decks, um, giveaways, helping them market their meetups. And uh, now we're, I think we're up to, I don't know, 15, 18 ambassadors. It's growing every month. Um, not all are, you know, 100% active, um, but it's our goal to just keep that number going. Let's hit 50 by the end of the year. Let's cover the globe. Let's turn the world purple. And let's reach out to our local grassroots Pivians and help them get, you know, Pivx accepted in their local stores and uh, introduce the currency and the community to um, to Pivx. Awesome, and and this is something that you know it's not a an easy or like a give me role, would you say, for these ambassadors? Because you do have people that approach you that aren't necessarily the right fit for the community, or maybe don't mm -hmm. want to make the commitment that you need because it's it's not like a it's not a fly by night team that you've got going on here. These are dedicated people. Yep. Yeah, there is a criteria. So if you go to the website, um, pivxambassadors.org, um, you can see a criteria. We really expect um, not a huge amount, but a pretty good, decent amount of uh, commitment, including you know being active in Discord, being responsible to help support. You know, if there's a support ticket or something that's in your region, in your language, you're there, and even to the point of managing the social media channels that are in your region as well. So helping out with marketing, um, but really the, the hands and feet on the ground, you know, meeting merchants, meeting meeting new people, talking about Pivx and helping them be introduced to this amazing community and currency. Absolutely. And what do you think has been the, the most interesting way someone's found you? Like they, that, do they normally come through a friend or someone that's already in the community or are these people that just like mm -hmm. find Pivx on the internet or what, what's, what's the most interesting way you've been connected? Interesting. Mostly they come through Discord and through someone who's been part of the community for a little bit. They're hanging out, they're talking in the channels. They start to hear a little bit. They see, they see the word ambassadors. And they they direct message me. I don't I don't think I've had anything too quirky, out of the blue. Um, the the hardest part for for I guess for me and them is sometimes the language barrier. So I'm I'm Google translating some things in their chat, and they're Google translating back to me. And so we're I'm learning how to communicate on a way different level, um, knowing that I can't just be slang and kind of off the cuff chat, I have to kind of like be really grammatically correct because I know they're going to put that into Google Translate. Um, so we're doing we're doing some fun stuff and, and 
you know, I realize there's pauses in between chats, and I know they're trying to translate. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the ambassadors do speak English as well, and so we're 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 really. I mean, it's really going well. Um, we're looking forward to more uh, within the Asian community. Um, we're looking for ambassadors in the uh, in uh, India. Um, if you look at the map on the website, you can see some major poles in in the globe. So. Um, if you're part of those communities um, and you, you see there's no PIVX dot on the map, give me a shout. So those are the big ones you would say, um, India being one of them. What, what are some other top ones that you can think of for the folks that are listening? Oh, hello. Oh, we got to yeah, we're Jeff here. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff Hi, everyone. Speaking of uh, champion ambassador. Yeah. Um, if you actually, if you do look at at the African continent, I mean, it's there's there's not a lot representing there, so we are looking for more in there. Um, in the Asian community, like we have um, Cryptoweight, who's joined us from Singapore. Hopefully, he can get on the channel. Um, we're excited about that. We have representation in some of the Asian communities, but not enough, and you can see it on the map. Uh, Malaysia, um, you know, we just. We need reps in Australia and uh, in China. Um, we have a growing community in in uh, Ukraine and Russia and those areas. But again, every community is kind of unique, and a lot of them have their own unique language. So we're really looking to just blanket the the globe with purple. I love it. I love That's that. It. Let's sprinkle it everywhere. Oh. Yeah, Wait, you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself. Get so excited. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, John, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, as always, it is a pleasure. We can keep them on to hang a little oh, bit. Yeah. We have a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah, Chad, do you want to hang? Yeah. You may want to chime yeah, in. Yeah, I'll hang out for sure. Please. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Sure, guys. Um, glad to be here. Awesome. Uh, you know, we won't keep you long. I know you're not feeling super great today, so uh, we really appreciate you, you taking the time to be here and uh, – yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep this brief. So just tell us quick, how did you find out about the program? And, uh, and then I'd love to segue kind of into what your process is when you're dealing with people and kind of onboarding them to accept PIVX. Um, so basically my cryptocurrency journey, I, I'm quite an early adopter from 2012. Um, I actually got paid for working with a data center company and they, they opted in to pay me in Bitcoin. So since then, I've been really interested in that. And, you know, I'm from South Africa and the banking system, yeah, is, you, you know, it's not really adequate. And um, so I've always been this very intrigued person by cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies. And the only problem with them is, as you know, this privacy itself isn't really guaranteed even with the blockchain. And that's where I was, you know, I heard about PIVX in 2017 after the, the you know, the rebrand. And it had, at that stage, the privacy in PIVX was through uh, coin mixing. Um, obviously, then they introduced the zero coin protocol and all that. So for me, I was really a privacy advocate. And, you know, I, I tested the blockchain out for a bit when I joined their Slack community. And there's just such a great vibe and, you know, so much growth and people really interested in changing this, you know, this economy, this this entire environment around here. So it really gained my, you know, my, my um, what, how do I say this? My curiosity and um, you know I slowly took part in the community and learned a lot about wallets I mean my knowledge now has been you know quite great since I joined PIVX so that's pretty much how it all began um, so what I actually do is because the technology in PIVX is so you know superior to Bitcoin as itself when it comes to privacy low fees and fast transactions and me just generally not liking the banking system here in South Africa um, I've actually been targeting merchants around here, educating them about PIVX and, you know, the benefits of why and, you know, how to use it and all that. And, it's, you know, it's been a great pro uh, procedure where we've had meetups in Cape Town, South Africa. We've had merchants all over. And uh, funny enough, there was actually an article published recently that uh, South Africans are the highest cryptocurrency owners in the entire world. So, I mean, that's, that was quite crazy to see that. Wow. I don't know how factual it is. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a bit surprised, but it, it does make sense considering there's so much that happens here. And I mean, PIVX is starting to shine here. And I, I think that's it's really a place that uh, we need to target considering, you know, the amount of growth and the, the need for such technology here. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your process of <clears throat> dealing with merchants that are going to set up to accept PIVX um, and, and just like how that's worked, what you've seen people uh, are most intrigued by because I know you've dealt with very real world sort of applications 
uh, one of which is the fish and chips there was a hair joint salon we mentioned video. on the last episode. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, then, and then we also have uh, the folks from Renger in Sweden that are going to be joining us in a few minutes from now uh, that have the dried meat shop in Sweden. Smoked so, reindeer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sorry, yeah, that's Santa. You know, <laughs> never had reindeer meat, let me tell you. That's some good stuff. Uh, so tell us, uh, Jeff, a bit about why people are adopting Pivx and actually using it in these real-world places and uh, what that process looks like when they say, I want to do it. Okay. So, well, from my side, obviously, the, the idea from it came was with card manufacturers here, card machine producers and stuff. The issue is in South Africa, we have uh, quite a bad network infrastructure. Um, and what that happens, what happens now with businesses is that sometimes their transactions can't go through because they're relying on, you know, Visa or MasterCard and things like that. So obviously there was always a need for something that can always work. Not only that, the fees are quite high. Being in, you know, South Africa, which is a lower income country, you know, when you're earning your money, you can't add much markup. And now you got these banks and that taking, you know, three to 14% on a transaction that can be, you know, quite bad for your business. So for them, they love the idea of, you know, being able to access this, their funds immediately at such mm -hmm. low costs and pretty much instantaneously. The nice thing is actually like, I actually work uh, before Pivx, I was doing IT and fixing people's computers. And I ran into scenarios where businesses would pay me via bank transfer. And obviously in South Africa, that takes two to three days unless they're the same bank. And what actually happened was sometimes they would actually, you know, not be honest and say that they sent the money and it never, I never received it. And, you know, with Pivx, that's impossible because the moment you send the money, it's guaranteed to be yours. And that was a selling uh, idea that all the customers liked, all the merchants, may I say, um, they liked the idea of instantly being able to, you know, see the funds and it's full, uh, full in their control. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the biggest point. And that also it's it's more about taking part in what, what this growth is. You know, a lot of them heard about what Bitcoin is and all that it's becoming, but they saw that Bitcoin isn't actually, you know, utilized for retail due to the high fees and slow processing times. So many of them were already intrigued and had some knowledge on it. And you know, I just showed them the next, you know, the next big thing. And <laughs> the, what, the simple one was when I showed them the, the mobile wallet and how quick the funds, um, you know, transfer and the low fees and all that. And for that, I mean, just their face, it was so genuine. And that's pretty much where I knew, you know, this, you know, Pivx has a really great future yeah, in South Africa to be used as, a, as actually a currency. And they say Africa as a continent is picking up on a lot of these methods of payment so much faster than, you know, any other continent on the planet. Do you think that you're going to see sort of similar need and want for adoption in some of the other African countries? Uh, yes, we've actually seen a lot of the growth happening in Zimbabwe, as you know, because their banking system has failed. Um, other countries such as Ghana, Kenya, and Nigeria are also leading when it comes to a cashless society and moving on to, you know, blockchain cryptocurrencies. So the reason for that obvious, obviously be due to the lacking uh, banking system. Also, not only that, many people in South Africa have family that's living overseas. So, or even, even you know, intercontinental around other countries. And that's the same thing for, you know, people in Nigeria. So to send via, you know, these, these other methods, that that like uh, moneygram and all that the fees it's just it's too much and this there's such benefit to using cryptocurrency over that so for me it's got the brightest future possible in in Africa as a continent especially considering you know what all we go through when it comes to finance here in my mind um, I do think that once people learn more about it here in South Africa and you know Africa as a whole it would be the preferred means of transfer of any funds around the world Wow and what was the turning point for businesses adopting this? Do you think the mobile wallets uh, played a big role in that? Uh, yes, definitely. Because as you know, a core wallet would take too much time to update and it's a bit of a, a mission to you know set up a laptop or whatever and get this full wallet to sync. So once we had the mobile wallet set up and also Coinomi, it just became so much simpler. You know, the, 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 the merchant could back up their funds using the BIP keys and then you know it's easy transfer between clients by scanning a QR code. So it is much simpler and you know everyone keeps their phone on them and sometimes you forget your wallet at home. So for me when I go to like the pie shop and that it's easier for me to pay them with Pivx than it is with my wallet. Amazing. What, so what are some of the, the businesses that you know personally are using and accepting Pivx right now? 
Um, personally, in South Africa, there's about five of them that I personally deal with. It's like the pie shop, the hair salon, and um, the fish and chip shops. Then there's Mary. I was actually, I could pass her on if you guys still would like to question yeah, her. She is here. bring Mary uh, on. <laughs> and Alex, too, as well. Alex, <laughs> yeah, so she runs her own photography company and, and character, you know, I don't know how to pronounce it, but she she does drawings and stuff and uh, and logos and all that. And she accepts PIVX, So, but I think it's best to ask her about all of that. Amazing. Alex, we're going to have you on in just a minute. We're running a, a few minutes behind here, but we're going to get back on schedule. Okay. Right yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. 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 Perfect. Okay. Loud and clear. See you soon. Would you, Thank you. Would you guys like me uh, to pass to Mary? Or is Mary anyone joining us now? Cool. Okay. Give me a second. Let me hand over the, the headset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Hi, Mary. Hi. <laughs> you, you were the one that got your hair done in the video, right? And it was paid with money. Yes. Yeah, nice. Where do you do that? That's on the YouTube channel. There's a great video of uh, Jeff treating Mary for a day at the salon, and he thinks it's going to be like as fast as a PIVX transaction. And he goes outside, he goes, so apparently this takes a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, yeah I, am, I remember Jeff. I was shocked the first yeah. time I uh, experienced firsthand how long a woman's hair can take. Yeah, it doesn't just look like this. No. So tell us, tell us about accepting PIVX as a photographer, or graphic designer, and what that's been like for you. Um, well, it's actually been really good. Um, for my um, art, I actually get a lot of PIVX exceptions. Um, South, as well as South Africans, as well as people online. Um, I personally like it because when South Africans send me money through our bank, it actually takes 24 hours. And I've actually had a problem with somebody not paying me and saying they actually did pay me. Uh, and it was a horrible fiasco because the bank um, was going back and forth with me telling me that, oh, yeah, they did send you money, but we can't give it to you. So that was a huge problem. Um, I actually never got it sorted out. They got the art for free. And now I don't do that anymore. <laughs> wow. Um, but PIVX has helped me a lot. I mean, I can do, I can ask them for payment up front and I get it right away. There's no hassle. There is no faffing around. It's straight to the point and I love it. That's amazing. It is so hard as a creative and a marketer to get paid. I know even like for us having an agency, PIVX has been the best. I don't think I've ever had a client pay up front before, or have it so seamless. And yeah, yeah, so tell me about when you do have somebody that wants to buy art, they purchase it, or they do they send you an email and say, this is the one I want? Like, what, what does that look like? Just tell us a little bit about that process. So a lot of my work is actually pet portraits. So oh, what people do is they send me a bunch, I ask them for a bunch of photos of their dog, their lizard or whatever it is. And I work off that. So you tell me a theme, what you what you want in the photo and then I work off of it. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and all for PIVX. So all those <laughs> PIVX pups out there and PIVX pussycats, you can now pay and PIV. And you're staking those babies, right? Jeff does that all for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mary. We really appreciate Pleasure. it. And uh, thank you for uh, helping the adoption of PIVX. And if you guys want pack portraits, okay. hit up Mary and Satoshi so, Naka Jeff. Get your PIV out, baby. Okay. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome Alex from Renger in Sweden to the show. Uh, this is the shop we were telling you about that sells dried meats. Uh, which sound and look quite delicious Delice, from what I hear. Yeah. So welcome, yes. Alex. Yeah, thank you. Do you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I hear you loud and clear. Good. 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 Yeah. Uh, we. Yeah, we are uh, Renia Snacks. We are located in Sweden, and uh, we are all three founders, big fans of cryptocurrency. So uh, we got into this that we said we want to accept cryptocurrency. And uh, yeah, with coin payments, we could accept uh, quite an amount of them. And uh, yeah, PIVX is one of them because I think PIVX with all the features it has is a pretty good choice. Amazing. 
so it, before we go any further, can you just teach us how to properly say the name of the shop? Because I, I can tell that we've totally ruined Renier. it. Renier? Renier. Renier. Renier? Renier? Okay. Renier, Soft. yeah. Soft J. Soft J. I should have guessed that. I, I should have known that. Yeah. But but Back. it's it comes it comes from because we started with reindeer jerky mm -hmm. and it comes from Ren is the word in Swedish for reindeer. And the yeah, the comes from the jerky. So ah. yeah. And we have uh, our internet address is dot ky. So we have rain year key. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Have you had people come to you because they saw in Pivx that they could buy it, like jerky with their pit? Honestly, I think we are all really, we, we do that more from the perspective that we're really convinced about uh, cryptocurrency and about uh, wanting support that. Yes. But uh, as a jerky brand, I I don't see that we missed. Uh, we wouldn't have missed out so much sales not accepting. <laughs> not yet. Well, it, can, it wasn't the last. I mean, we can all buy online and, uh, and ship yeah, it. Does the reindeer fly? How far can fly? you ship that? Yeah, it can. It flies, right? Um, Jeff bought from us, so yeah. uh, we we could ship it there. But I don't think it's I don't think it's really legal to just ship to South Africa. <laughs> oh well, they could yeah. like they could probably make lion jerky, and yet they're not allowed to have reindeer yeah. jerky. That doesn't seem right. Because the the problem is that uh, meat has often some oh. import uh, customs to so many countries. Ah, uh, gotcha. There are restrictions, so in, in several countries it's not possible. We ship all over Europe, so uh, in the whole EEA countries, all the countries that are part of the economic area of Europe, they, they can all easily purchase our product with cryptocurrency. I think 18 different ones, and one of them is Pivx. Nice. Uh, that is so cool. So um, what is, do you, do you accept it on your phone? I know I have this fascination lately, because <laughs> to me I just like, I like to know well, how how does it work? Like, are are you uh, does somebody have a designated phone, or what, what are you doing there to actually accept Pivx? If I came today and bought some, um, we have uh, uh, we have we use a service called Coin Payments. I don't know if you know that. Oh but yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Right. It's one of the pretty common ones for uh, for e-commerce which wants to accept cryptocurrency. I think Coinbase recently launched something similar. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they are via this uh, interface of coin payments, you can pay in Pivx to us. Very cool. So when somebody pays in Pivx, then you get, uh, yeah, like in your chosen currency, um, just like any normal purchase? Uh, what do you mean? Um, do you, so when when somebody pays in Pivx, do you receive uh, like like Krona or do you, you're using Krona, right? No, we, we we receive the actual cryptocurrency on different wallets. So uh, Coin Payments has uh, on our Coin Payments account we have uh, wallets to all the currencies we hold, and there we receive it in the cryptocurrency. Very so, good. So um, it's a bit the issue nowadays that in the end, if you want to reuse the money to pay your bills and so on. Uh, you have to exchange it to fiat because uh, our suppliers, you know, who sells reindeer meat on the countryside in the north of Sweden, they don't accept cryptocurrency. Like, they <laughs> have to pay with Krona. So I have to, uh, yeah, change it again. Um, yeah, it, it's a big issue nowadays, I think, with all the cryptocurrency uh, still that uh, prices are not in cryptocurrency. So Today, it could be a different amount that you pay them tomorrow because of the fluctuation of the price and our price is a euro or sec uh, so Swedish crowns. So uh, yeah, that's that's uh, a bit tricky. We got somebody asking in the comments if you can ship to the US. Not to the US, uh, it's legally super difficult and we don't think we can do that in the near future. Oh. Yeah. What what do you need to make that happen? Let's let's shout out to the Piv community. See if they got any connections for you. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess I guess we must find someone who produces our recipe with caribou in Canada for the American market or something. Oh, <laughs> okay. that could work. 
work. That could definitely, we have reindeer farms. Like, like I, I said that uh, shipping reindeer meat from Europe to America is hardly possible, um, but like legally, um, right. but uh, if, if we manage to produce in America, somewhere in the American uh, economic area, like in, in the United States, Canada, or, or that, that region, then it's possible, I guess. Well, Snappy's got a big enough farm that we could buy some reindeer and then start a Pimex distribution of reindeer. You know, we We're could just take it to the next level. We're expanding. expanding. Uh, yeah, it. Jack, uh, Jeff has my contact. Hit me up with everything uh, about that. We're all businessmen. We try, we look for opportunities. There you go. I <laughs> love it. Well, there, if there's anybody watching that has connections that can help these folks out expand, let us know. Jump Santa, into Discord. Santa. Where are you Santa. located, by the way? Uh, we're in Canada, just outside Toronto. You are in Canada. Okay. Canada, yeah. You have caribou in Canada, right? Oh yeah. Hey, we got all we the got caribou. We got them on our quarters. All we the got caribou them on your heart could, could possibly want. Yeah. Yeah. Me as a me as a reindeer seller, I know your caribou and and reindeer is basically the same thing. It's just called differently. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. I love it. I'm always confused though. Is it moose, mooses, or is it meese? You well, know, it's moose plural? is singular, meese is plural. Is that true? Though? Is that I don't know. I don't know where the where is the where is the audience from that you have? The audience. It's everywhere. Everywhere. You're, you're, All over the place. Okay. Because because you say moose, that's your American word for for the elk, what we call elk in Europe. Ah. Yeah, so make it even more confusing. Uh, in British English, this animal is called elk. So we sell uh, products reindeer, elk, and deer jerky. And the elk is actually a moose in America. Interesting. Gosh, we're learning all kinds of things today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. And uh, yeah. we're coming up to that time now where folks get down in the comments, start leaving some little notes, things, words. Uh, prophecies, whatever you want. Well, maybe for the the, the guests that we still have, um, if well, I didn't guys... finish because it's a contest. You can win Piv again. Uh -huh. Now you can you can continue. Uh -huh. there. Well, I was gonna say for our guests that are still on, if you guys want to pop in and for the last uh, eight minutes, we're gonna talk about what we can actually do as a community <coughs> to expand on Pivx places. We <coughs> get you know more uh, dried meat shops or not because. We'll keep it a monopoly. All the dried meat. Whoever else getting <laughs> Pivx, what do you guys think we can do to Alex, Chad, and to Jeff if you're still there? What can we do to help expand and, and what can the people watching do? Is it the question to us or? Yeah, yeah you anybody. start, Alex. What, what would you say yeah. to anyone else? Well, why do you accept Pivx? Um, I think everyone who likes the general idea of. Um, cryptocurrency of, of uh, this this new movement of 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 un, like banking or banking by the people uh, and uh, people who like um, to have uh, security and uh, yeah how, how you say in English um, privacy I think uh, they have a good choice when they use Pivx to pay nice and it's fast right? Yes, the fast right. the fast part's huge, as we learned from Mary. That was a massive issue. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, it's, it's extremely fast. Yeah, Jeff. Well, how do you think we can do a better job as a community to uh, get more Pivx places on the map? You still, still with us, Jeff? Um, yes, I'm here. Sorry, I was just fixing my microphone. Um, okay, so. The biggest thing that people ha um, have when it comes to getting cryptocurrency such as PIVX accepted is, is they have an idea of a store that they'd like to see accepting PIVX, or maybe they run a store themselves, but they just don't know how to start. So my invitation is to everyone that has this idea or maybe knows of a merchant or is a merchant, you know, reach out to me. My email address, I can make it all public and, you know, I'm free. I'm, I'm literally available till midnight every day in the PIVX Discord. And um, I'm here to help get you guys to get accepted, um, get Pivx accepted at your merchant or, you know, accept it yourself. We've got lots of options open from mobile wallets, light wallets, and coin payments. And there's also a payment gateway that's currently in development. Um, 
Chad would probably announce that. Um, you know, he's, he's been doing a lot of work, some super cool stuff coming this side. Um, we've got so many resources. It's, you know, it's everywhere. And obviously, sometimes you just need a little push in the right place. So I'm always available, and I'm here to help you guys no matter what. Thank Amazing. you. Uh, and, and so for people who are listening that want to get in touch with you, what is uh, your email? Pretty simple. The spelling of my name, Jeffrey, ends in R E Y. I know a lot of people like to do E R Y. So it's Jeffrey at pivx.org. Okay. Woo. Perfect. So there you have it, folks. Uh, you've got somebody to be your guide should you want to get set up in your store, or if you knew, uh, have a vendor that you want to help get set up. Um, and if you forget that, if you're watching this later uh, or thinking about this later, jump into Discord and we'll get you connected. Chad, what do you think? Uh, from your end that we can do as a community to increase the amount of places on the Pivx Places map? Yeah, the, the site's set up for uh, you just sign up, log in, and register. So you can add your own merchant accounts and we just go on there and vet them and make sure you do accept Pivx. So it's self-serve. Um, the ambassadors go on and do it themselves. They'll add merchants for their, for their merchants. Um, but uh, yeah, go to pivxplaces.com and just add your add your uh, account, and if you accept Pivx, and we'll get you on there. And then we'll also create some advertising for you. We do little ad adverts that we push out onto our own social media just to talk about um, you know who you are, what you're doing. And we've sent some out with uh, with the beef jerky, uh, uh, reindeer jerky as well. So, so yeah, if you want some uh, advertising around the <laughs> Yanja, Canada, we want to have some uh, that that jerky in Canada. Yeah. So so just sign up. I think the easiest thing is just the site's there. It's self serve. Go use it. Um, but then you can talk to your ambassador, local ambassador too, to help out if if you need. Cool. Amazing. And then if people want to be ambassadors, if you are joining in late, um, you know you can speak with Chad. You can talk to some other ambassadors that that we have in our community, um, ask them about their experiences. And uh, yeah, I mean, guys, we are in mm -hmm. our, you know, we're in like pioneer era. So this is a very choose your own adventure kind of situation. Chad, I'm sure you'd agree. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think Jeffrey's yes. a great example of someone who's really taken this and like run with it and really been uh, the kind of ambassador that we would love to see all over the world. So if you've got ideas and you wanna get involved and you wanna participate in the community, um, hit up Chad, hit up Jeffrey, hit us up. We'll like hit them all up. Hit them up. Hit them hit up. up. Hit everybody hit up. up. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Yeah. How how what does it mean to be an ambassador for PMX? And do you have someone in Sweden already? Whoa, Chad. Chad, I think you're the best man. Answer. Um, we. Yeah, so we have a website called uh, pivxambassadors.org, and that's uh, has all the criteria and how to sign up. Uh, we've had we had a, a local rep that was helping out in Sweden for a little bit, but um, su these guys sometimes are super busy with other projects. So we we're up for having multiple ambassadors within the same regions as long as they're kind of representing yeah. you know somewhat unique cities. So if if anyone in your area is, it wants to connect um, pivxambassadors.org and uh, there's an application on there you can read about the criteria you actually get paid uh, there's a little stipend every month if you're doing meetups and if go ahead in pivx hopefully oh yeah yes you get paid in piv yes it's uh, all pivx and if there's something bigger that goes on in your community we'll we uh, we support sending you to a conference locally um, we'll get you you know if you need to by yeah. the entrance fee or if you need swag we send swag out so it's a right. it's not just a cool program to promote pivx it's it's a really great community we um jeffrey can attest we're not just doing business together we're actually uh, forming relationships and really supporting each other on all kinds of levels uh, nice i i will look uh, definitely into that um I'm pretty busy with the company, but uh, I don't know the, how, how, how intensive is it? Can you also do this on the side, so to say, or is it a full-time job? Yeah. No, no, it's a part-time job. A lot, of, a lot of the ambassadors work more than they, they, do, they should, but they're, they're giving back and they're investing in their own investment. But 
um, you know, uh, meet up every every two three months or or attend an event maybe twice a year, and we ask them to be somewhat active within the Discord to be uh, in touch with their region. So if there's a language, we have language channels, so um, you can connect with those in the region, uh, mm -hmm. speak the language. Um, but it's it's pretty. The criteria is. It's a high enough bar that we, we really make sure we have quality people, mm -hmm. but it's low enough that um, it's not really scary. And I, I would say just give it a go. Cool. I, I will look into it. And I, I have contact to Jeff, so then I can tell him. Yes, yeah. and I have a Jeff, special Jeff's request. A good guy. Alex, if you become the Pivik Sweden ambassador, you got to go strike with Greta and sit next to her in your purple shirt. She said what? You gotta what? go sit next to Greta outside Greta. the Swedish uh, the Swedish ambassador office and and protest. Greta, Greta Thunberg, the Swedish the little Swedish activist. Every Friday, she strikes. We gotta get in I've there. No oh, the kids, the kids. Yeah, climate yeah, yeah. change, global warming. Greta, the little oh, sweet, yeah, yeah, yeah. the little angry one. Yeah. You gotta get up there in your purple I, shirt. I, we we people who really work have no time to follow those things. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh well, I'm working on saving on the planet in addition to everything else, so I always know about these things. <laughs> yeah, oh, Robert is cute. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think it's time to choose a winner. It is time. And we want to thank all of our guests for joining us today on the Pivx Live Roundtable. This is episode number four, and. We have a winner. Is that right? Dun, 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 dun. RG. 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 Okay. Uh, please just comment in the chat with your Discord name and uh, shoot a DM over to me on Discord. Um, or Telegram, as our previous winner is on Telegram. Or Telegram. Telegram is okay as well. Uh, oh, crap. I can't remember my Telegram username off the top of my head. But you know what? I just posted in the Pivx channel, both in Discord and in Telegram. So you can DM me through that. Right. Thank you. Two weeks from now, we're <coughs> having a special environmental episode, which is what I meant to tease. Special with environment episode. Climate change. Uh, yes, we're going to be talking about is Bitcoin bad for the planet and why Pivx is so much better. So please join us on Thursday, April 11th at 3 p.m. EST. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Satoshi Naka Jeff. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Rawr. Pivx Panther. Thanks, everyone. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time, two weeks from now. Keep it purple. Keep it purple, baby.